Yo, what's going on, YouTube? Guard up on defense here, back in the video today. In this video, I want to go over the takeovers and kind of discuss what I think 2K needs to change about them because a few of these takeovers in this game are just completely useless or they're kind of underpowered, in my opinion. But before we get into that, if you need to chant that sub button on that road to 500 subscribers, leave a like down below if you enjoyed, and leave some comments for some video ideas in NBA 2K22. But yeah, I just made this build. Don't copy anything if you see, like, I don't know if you just see the build somehow, but don't copy it. It's just a garbage build that I used to get all the takeovers. Same with the other one I'm going to make, because for some reason you can't edit them after you made them. So I'm just going to have to make another one for the other takeovers after. But yeah, I'm going to start with the slashing takeovers. These are some of the best in the game. I mean, not in terms of what they are, but the stat boosts that it gives you are crazy good. So like advanced gathers, I think this one's a little bit underpowered in my opinion, compared to like finishing moves at least advanced gathers is solid i mean if you want to do your a lot i'm really good at euro steps and stuff so i kind of do like this takeover and it stops you from getting jammed up which is really nice when you're trying to go into the paint but compared to just being able to dunk on someone or catch an alley-oop on someone it's not as effective in that regard and i feel like you could just be better off picking that and just dunking on them instead of trying to be kind of uh, doing something like a euro or a spin just because a lot of times 2k will give you a bad animation and you get really unlucky and get contested so I feel like just getting contact dunks is better. So I mean this one's probably a little underpowered. I mean what they could do is maybe... I don't even know. They they got to do something with this takeover. Same with uh, blow buys. People talk about this one and the only reason it doesn't work for a lot of players is because you, you need high strength for it to actually work which is stupid. I don't know why but if you don't have high strength sometimes you can still get clamped very easily with easy blow buys on. So I also think it's a little bit underpowered. Maybe make it so you don't need such a high strength to get those blow buys. Because, I mean, there are guards in the NBA that are great at blowing by defenders. Just because of their smaller frame and how fast they are. So it doesn't really make sense that you need strength just to use it. But yeah, obviously the best one of one of the best takeovers in the entire game, finishing moves. Allows you to just dunk on everyone at will, basically. Even though you can already kind of do that sometimes. But this just makes you go absolutely brain dead. And the stat boost it gives you are absolutely crazy. You get plus 8 ball handle. You get plus 5 3 ball. Plus 8 to all your dunking. Plus 5 to all your defense, plus 8 to your speed, excel, vertical. I mean, there's not many takeovers in the game that have that great spread out of attributes. So I think finishing moves is perfectly fine, but I think these two other ones do need an upgrade. Somehow, I don't know what they can do to change it, but at least something. I mean, maybe combine these two into one. So it's just so there's two slashing takeovers if you want to keep them separate, which I don't know if 2K is going to do. But now let's go into the shot creating. Pull up precision, of course this one's fine. But this is one that no one really uses, mostly because of the next one. But yeah, pull-up precision is fine. It's good where it is. I, I don't see anyone really take off the dribble shots because the mid-range as well. Not really how the game is played at all. So I don't think it's very useful in that regard compared to everything else. But hey, if you like shooting spin jumpers with pull-ups or whatever, this is fine. It's great for that. But I think it's fine where it is, but it's not really that important. So no one's really going to use it. This one right here now, this is one I really want to talk about, ankle breaking shots. It's honestly overpowered in my opinion. I've gotten broke by ankle breakers, but people weren't even using this takeover and all they gotta do is wiggle their left stick and stuff and it lets you get ankle breakers, which is stupid. I just think ankle breakers in general are broke in this game. Ankle braces doesn't actually do anything. So there's no point in having that to save. You can't even say that's a that's why I get ankles broke, because that badge does nothing. It's been proven that it does nothing. I just think ankle breaking shots, it's a little bit unfair to playmaking takeover that they get ankle breakers and can shoot really well plus because that plus eight to their shooting so i don't really understand why they get ankle breakers and being able to shoot really well that was supposed to be what playmaking was for so i mean this one's a little bit overpowered maybe it should be nerfed a little bit or changed some way negative impact same with kind of pull up precision no one's really using it it's only this one and shot creating usually but the reduced impact of shot contests, I mean, that's what blinders and dead eyes are already for, so I don't think that's even necessary. I mean, maybe these two together would be a lot better. So there's only two takeovers to choose between. That's what I kind of think 2K needs to do is combine two of the weaker ones and just leave the one very good one as it is, because that would make more sense. Maybe it'd get people to actually use these other two if it were one badge that was combined. Sharp, just like Sharp, you know, there's only two of them, but Sharp, of course, it's really amazing. Uh, the stat boosts aren't very good, but the shooting capabilities that you get from this badge are just well worth it for a lot of people. Especially when you have hot shot on, it's incredible what the shots you can make. Especially if you have limitless range, you're shooting half court and greening 
pretty consistently. And if you have spot of precision, you're knocking down still pretty deep, but you're also way easier in a catch and shoot situation to green there. So I think sharp is perfectly fine. It might be a little bit overpowered even, of course, like every year. But that's just how it is. If you get sharp take, the game's basically over against a good player. Now the defense, the perimeter defense badges, I think these need to be tweaked. Extreme Clamps is great. Maybe even make it a little bit better. Uh, if you have strength, it's fine. But without strength, people still can get blown by pretty easily. I don't think that needs to be changed. Perimeter badge drop. Honestly, instead of having this, they might as well just bring back defensive, uh, what's it called? Oh, what's that badge called from 17, man? I don't know what it is, but you guys probably know what I'm talking about. It's that badge that would drop your badges and... You could get on a pure lock at Hall of Fame, and other ones you could get on a bronze in that game. I don't remember the name of it. Defensive something. I don't think... No one's really going to use this, man. Like, You can drop people's badges, but it doesn't even matter. Their ratings are so high, and they still have gold or silver badges if you drop those down. So they can still shoot pretty easily. So I don't even think that's very useful. When well, you can just have extreme clamps and stop them from rim running and bump them a lot easier. Lower their stamina, make it harder for them to shoot that way. I think this one needs to be probably combined with this one. I mean, enhanced jump shot contest is not really useful. You should be able to contest shots without having a takeover, in my opinion. It should be always like this. So I don't really understand why you should have to have a takeover to be able to contest shots. It just seems like it's completely irrelevant that they just added it so you could have a third lock takeover. That's what it seems like to me. But I think this these two should probably be combined as well. Uh, another thing a sharp take. They need to remove the ability to hit 100% smothered shots or heavily contested shots. It's, I mean, it happens in real life and in the NBA and stuff, but it's not really fair in the game that people can just throw up anything. I, know, I get that they have their takeover, but it's not that hard to get sharp takeover. You can get three three-pointers with hot shot, and you already have it. Maybe even less than that. So I don't think it's very fair to be able to hit those contested shots. You still should have to have smart uh, IQ and know what's a good shot instead of having to just throw up anything and make it. It's kind of unfair to, in that regard there. But yeah, now I'm going to show you the other takeovers. I think there's four other ones. So I just got to make this build quick. Now, again, don't make this build. This is just purely to make the takeovers, I think. So don't make this build at all. I'm just making it sure everything's right. Because I got to get post scoring and rim protecting glass cleaner and all that stuff. And those are... Not usually something that people want. Playmaking, of course, gotta max everything out. Interior, block. Like these, this build would be terrible in game, so that's why I'm saying don't ever make it. I'm just kind of doing that. Okay. So now we got playmaking. I think playmaking is underpowered. The people that use it kind of are putting themselves in a disadvantage for what it does. Like, the team ratings boost only gives you, I think, an extra plus four, which isn't enough, in my opinion, to even think about using it. It should be at least plus eight, maybe even plus six at the lowest. Like, getting playmaking takeover is one of the harder ones to get, because, like, if you have slash, you can just get a uh, heat seeker, and if you have, uh, what's it called, hot shot, you can just get sharp super easily. So I think playmaking needs some sort of way to get it i don't know special delivery should give you a big boost to playmaking take but it's not that easy to get flashies as it is to score in this game so i think two can easily do something with team ratings boost like a lot of all the playmaking takeovers in my opinion should be able to get ankle breakers i don't know why 2k took it away i get that there's players in real life that are passers that don't break ankles like that but it gives playmaking another reason to be chosen like that was the whole reason a lot of players chose playmaking was just to get ankle breakers which is not how i play but it's just kind of nice to have that it'd make people want to use it a little bit more I mean, people might still go with shot creating, but if you want to be a team player and be able to get ankle breakers, you can go with playmaking. And some people might actually choose it then. But I think team ratings boost is under power. Team takeover boost. I don't even know what this does. I've used it multiple times and asked my teammates if their stuff went up, and it didn't even change. So I don't know if it's broken or what. But this needs to be adjusted or something. I don't know what they can do, but it should at least give your teammates... A good chunk of their takeover maybe even one full takeover if you, like if you get your own takeover it should be like a mini team take in my opinion so let's say you get in and activates all your teammates but it's only the first takeover not all three of them so that's what that would be fair or something like that would make it a little bit more useful team badge boost this one's probably the best playmaking takeover in the game uh, I do kind of wish that it would 
maybe give you some extra bronze badges or something when you activate it, but it doesn't do that. But if you have gold deep threes, it'll give you Hall of Fame and so on and so forth. So I think this one's great. Maybe even combine it with team ratings or something and have this as a the other one, something like that. Just make it a little bit better. I just think playmaking is under underpowered compared to every other takeover in the game. It might be the worst. Uh, probably glass or rim or the worst, or even uh, post guard's better. Glass is probably the least useful. I mean, if you're that type of player, it's fine. But I mean, you can get rebounds without having a takeover. Now we're at the rim protector. Uh, I mean, rim is also underpowered just because of the block animations. I don't, I don't understand why does 2K hide block animations behind a takeover. That's not how it should be. You should have all the animations in the game at all times if you're an elite rim protector. I don't know why 2K decided, yeah, let's take out some of the block animations for only when you have a takeover, because that's not fair. Everyone on slashing, they get all their dunk animations basically right away, so why can't everyone get blocks right away? What it should do is give you an increased chance of getting those great block animations and not just unlock them, which I don't think is very fair. Because a, a lot of times you can be in great position to get a block, but because you don't have those extra animations unlocked, you don't get it, and people are used to score over you very easily. So I think 2K needs to allow us to access those animations at all times and just give you an increased chance with this. I just think it's mostly a 2K gameplay problem and not really a takeover problem, but stuff blocks needs to be probably buffed a little bit more. Pain Intimidation. I've had I've used this and Nightmares used this, and it's not a big difference. Uh, like you can be right in position, and just because someone has slithery, you're out of position, and it basically counts as no contest. So having this on is not really gonna help you. I'd rather have more blocks than pain intimidation. It's a severe penalty, but it's not a big penalty. You won't notice much of a difference because a lot of times you're in great position already get a contest, and this badge is not gonna help you when you're already in great position. It's just gonna help you. It's, it should help you when you're out of position more than what it does. So I don't think it's very good, and it should be upgraded in 2K22. To your badge up, same thing with the perimeter. I think these two should be combined. They're just too weak compared to the other ones that you got to put them both together for them to be useful to people. Glass cleaner. I mean, box out wall. I mean, the glass cleaner is one that's just so underpowered because they're just all separate. Like, even glass cleaner by itself with all three put together wasn't very good in past games. Just because if you knew where the rebounds are going, you were fine. I mean, it can be kind of helpful, but it's not some game-changing takeover where you can just take over the game. You're not going to take over the game beating rebounds. Yeah, box out wall, I mean, it's cool for what it is, but no one's really going to use it over to see the future, in my opinion, when you can actually just see where the rebounds are going. Easier put back, so you can get those rebounds for sure and box people out and know where the ball's going and be able to get those outlet passes out really fast. Uh, so I don't think anyone's going to be using this. I think the only people that would are like seven threes that have Hall of Fame Worm and Box or something like that, which I don't even think you need. You only need like Silver Box in this game because no one really runs Worm. Yeah, I think this one's underpowered. Uh, See the Future is the best one by far. But I still think it's not good for what it is. 2K needs to do something with Glass Cleaner. I don't know, maybe combine Rim and Glass Cleaner or something like that just to give us another reason to use it because no one's going to pick glass clean over like slashing sharp shot creator anything like that um uh, glass clearing dinosaur is the weakest of them all and you can already throw successful outlet passes and <laughs> the kickouts to the boost the teammates offensive boost we don't know the exact numbers on that but i doubt it's anything important and no one's going to use this because you can already throw outlets and the offensive ability kickouts are not really going to happen very often in games. So I think this is one of the weaker ones. So like I said, it should be combined like that. Honestly, 2K needs to combine them or just make it so we have all the takeovers in one like we used to. Something like that. For those weaker ones. Some of these other ones like Sharp and Slash are all really OP. So having them spread out is probably better. Lastly, we got post scoring. Power back down. This one's good for what it is if you're a paint mashing big man. Uh, you can bully anyone down low at this point. And especially if you have back down punisher on, it's just going to knock people out of bounds with everyone having 25 strength. But the thing is, you might not even need this. Depending on how the game is in 2K22, if they let you have strength and everyone upgrades it, then it'll be a lot better for that situation. But I just think it's fine where it is. Post playmaking. Uh, not many players play in the post in general. And not many players even get post takeover, so it's not really that useful. Being able to pass out of the post for an extra kind of dimer effect is not really that great. That's what I'm saying. Like, 
maybe combine these two because these are the two probably the least used ones I would say uh, because these other two right here are way more useful and overpowered compared to these so maybe combine these or just remove post playmaking and have three instead of four so it's equal with the other ones because this is really not that useful and here we go onto the two best post scoring we got advanced post moves you just beat people off of everything you can just post spin brain dead and you're going to get to the rim basically every time like 2k19 especially with players that have no interior no post lockdown no strength they're just babies in the paint so having this on is actually great i think it's fine where it is it's not too overpowered not too underpowered it's, it'll feel overpowered just because of how everyone built their player but it's fine where it is and if you have rim you can just counter it pretty easily and if you have post lockdown you can counter it post shot daggers this is great for players who love to do fades and hop shots and all that. So I think it's great where it is. I mean, hitting post fades is already very easy. So having this, I can only imagine how good it would be for your player, especially if you have a high mid range, like upper 90s, that'd be crazy good. So if you want to play that way, it's great where it is. I think these two are by far the best post scoring takeovers. So I don't think they need to be changed. But yeah, the takeovers that I think need to be changed the most are playmaking, glass cleaning, and probably rim, like these three right here. The other ones, like you can handle what they are and they're pretty all right, but playmaking in these th two are so underpowered compared to the rest that no one's even using them. Like how often do you ever see anyone using glass or rim take, especially in the park, you don't see it. Playmaking is super rare as well. i never even seen post scoring, I think more than once in the park either. So all these obviously need to be upgraded if no one's using them. Tuka needs to do something about them to make them a little bit better. But the other four, I mean, they're great where they are for, like they're not great where they are, but they're tolerable and that you can get away with it but yeah that's pretty much it for the video like i said leave a like comment and subscribe if you're new and hope to see you in the next one thanks for watching